The publishing house of Diane de Cellier in Paris at this point has become unique in the world. She sponsors the presentation of some of the masterpieces of world literature illustrated with the most pertinent art, not art as decoration, but art as a visual meditation further inviting the reader deeper into the meaning of the appropriate text. And this way she has published such classics as The Tale of Genji from Japan or The Divine Comedy from Italy. When Dian asked me about the possibility of publishing a masterpiece of Sufi Persian literature in its golden age, the 12th and 13th centuries, I suggested using the magnificent manuscript now preserved in the Metropolitan Museum of Art of the probably most beautiful of all Sufi poems, The Canticle of the Birds by Attar, which dates to the turn of the 12th and 13th centuries and describes the flight of all the souls of the world symbolized as birds winging their way towards ultimate union with a metaphor for the Godhead represented as a magnificent solar bird. Of course, the Metropolitan Museum's manuscript, which dates from the end of the 15th century with further glorious additions to it by painters of the early 17th century from territories corresponding to what are today Afghanistan and Iran, we had the opportunity to bring further manuscript illuminations directly illustrating the themes, motifs, symbols of the poem from a wide range of countries of the Middle East corresponding to today's Turkey, to today's Uzbekistan, to today's Pakistan, and even India. And as a result, this production is probably the most glorious presentation imaginable of the poem and of its visual meditation. It is a deep introduction to the art as well as to the thought and the poetry of a civilization. The poem is exquisitely rendered by Dick Davis's English verse in iambic pentameters, and I was asked to provide the commentary of the illustrations with additions by my colleague Leili Anvar, who is responsible for the beautiful French rendition of the poem. And we sought in our commentaries to point out that what is called the Persian miniature, or the Mughal miniature, or the Ottoman miniature, is not simply an adornment, feast for the eyes though it may be, but it is also an allegorical composition of the greatest spiritual depth. These paintings, very much like the paintings of the European Christian Middle Ages, are glosses, spiritual commentaries, profoundly engaged in translating through visual symbolism the literary symbolism of the poem itself. And we do believe that it will be difficult to find anywhere on the market such an extraordinary package of literature and art of medieval Persian and Central Asian Islam at its most glorious poetry of the 12th and 13th centuries and paintings from the 14th to the 17th centuries. It is a feast for the eye, a feast for the mind, and a feast for the ear. Dear Hupo, welcome. You will be our guide. 
It was on you King Solomon relied to carry secret messages between his court and distant Sheba's lovely queen. He knew your language and you knew his heart. As his close confidant, you learned the art of holding demons captive underground. And for these valiant exploits, you were crowned. The world's birds gathered for the conference and said, Our constitution makes no sense. All nations in the world require a king. How is it we alone have no such thing? Only a kingdom can be justly run. We need a king and must inquire for one. They argued how to set about their quest. The hoopoe fluttered forward. On his breast there shone the symbol of the spirit's way and on his head truth's crown, a feathered spray. When Michael Barry suggested one day that I edit and publish Attar's Canticle of the Birds, my heart leaped with joy. I have always been fascinated by such cultural bridges between East and West, linking spiritual, mystical and artistic achievements. I felt here at once that this great poem, illuminated with Persian and Afghan Uzbek, Turkish and Indo-Islamic miniatures would prove a dazzling revelation to a vast public. Attar was a literary model and spiritual mentor, indeed a true guiding father for Rumi, Hafez and other great medieval Persian mystical poets. Yet, ever since medieval times, the universal appeal of Attar's verse has inspired not only Sufi thought, but also mystical literature and art, reaching well until our own day and far beyond the confines of the traditional Islamic world. Since you came as 30 birds, you see these 30 birds when you discover me, the Simorg, truth's last flawless jewel, the light in which you will be lost to mortal sight, dispersed to nothingness until once more you find in me the selves you were before. Then, as they listened to the Simorg's words, a trembling dissolution filled the birds. The substance of their being was undone and there were lost like shade before the sun. Neither the pilgrims nor their guide remained. The Seymour ceased to speak and silence reigned.